Today we have five creators representing three projects, uh, all web series. So I would love to introduce our panelists. We have Alexandra Roxo and Natalia Lete from Be Here Nowish. We have Ben Sinclair and Katya Blickfeld from High Maintenance. And we have Rob Michael Hugel from I Hate Being Single. So we're going to uh, see some clips and, and trailers from each of these projects and talk with all of our creators, and then we'll have time for a Q&A at the end. Uh, so let's start with Be Here Nowish. This is a, a web series that's premiering with us at Tribeca, so um, let's see a little more. So tell us a little bit more about Be Here Nowish and the characters that you each play. Uh, so the show, we started working on it uh, about a year ago. We did a Kickstarter for it, and it's very much inspired on our own lives and sort of, you know, the characters that are fictional, obviously, but they're sort of like variations or different sides of our personality. So um, we definitely pulled in. It was like a community effort. We worked with a lot of friends, and, you know, we pulled in a lot of um, stories from our own experiences. Yeah, basically, in the show, we go to L.A. to have a plant medicine ceremony and in search of some sort of spiritual enlightenment. And the, the concept of the show is kind of about finding a balance between, you know, going out and partying and, you know, drinking, whatever, and also trying to get up early and meditate. Um, and our characters very much pr portray uh, the both sides to that. And how did you first meet and decide to make this project together? Um, we met about two years ago at a party, actually. We were in the same community. Um, and I think from the beginning, we both were spiritual seekers, and we both tr had tried all kinds of things. So uh, Natalia and I could talk about tarot, psychics, energy cleaning, you know, feng shui, putting aluminum foil under the bed, all kinds of crystals. And then we also would go out and party, and were a big part of the same sort of Brooklyn queer community in Williamsburg. So... Um, we we had something to talk about in our work together. And we are also like, wow, we don't really see these types of uh, characters in the media and, and wonder why. And so we were like, well, let's just do something, even if it's super DIY, just the two of us, why not? Yeah, and, and the other factor, too, is that, you know, we... We had been working on other projects together. We're a directing team, and you know, we we had features that we were writing, and we were doing docs, and we just wanted to make something that was more immediate, that we had full creative control of, and we could just put it up on the web, and you know, have it be our baby in a sense, and not wait, you know, five years to make a feature because it takes so long to raise money for some of that. So, so did you always know that this would be a web series, or did that sort of impulse to get something out there right away dictate the form that the story took? No, we always knew it was going to be a web series. Like, we were really interested in exploring that route, and we had done some other online work and wanted to, you know, explore doing web series. Great. Uh, the next project is uh, High Maintenance, directed by Ben Sinclair and Katja Blickfeld, so let's take a look at that. I love this scene. It's so representative of the film and the humor and the tone. Uh, I'd love to hear you talk a little more about High Maintenance uh, as a whole series. Uh, High Maintenance as a series was designed for the web. Uh, you know, Katya and I were married and we wanted to uh, create a project together that we could both work on. And uh, Katya comes from a casting director background and I come from an acting background. Uh, so we had a bunch of uh, really fantastic actors at our not disposal at our, for our use, and uh, we uh, it, it it was just a matter of we would see someone we'd like, we'd kind of uh, stories would come together through talking because we're really together all day every day. So it's just like w we have the unique position of constantly writing together. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, all of our episodes actually our our show is sort of. Um, an anthology style show where the characters change from episode to episode. So, um, you know, Ben Ben is the one constant sort of throughout the series. You know he's going to show up at some point to deliver some weed, but you just don't know when or how he's going to enter. And um, I think we really set out to make something that wasn't a stoner show. We I, we really did want to sort of normalize marijuana use and or portray it as just being this you know, normal everyday thing, and, and that was kind of 
part of the impetus for it. And besides wanting to sort of, I think like a lot of actors who create web series, as you'll probably hear today, uh, wanted to create sort of a, a showpiece for Ben to sort of demonstrate his his unique skills and and he has many and uh, and that was sort of where it started. I don't think we really had any idea. We didn't have a plan in place of like how many episodes we would do or um, anything like that. Uh, in fact, when we created the first episode, um, we sat on it for like eight months and we're just kind of like showing people here and there pri like with a private link <laughs> and, and asking for feedback and once we had enough people say, oh, I'd like to see more, are there more? We sort of felt confident enough to keep going, but we never had a really overarching plan and it wasn't, you know, we never thought about it as like a money-making venture, it still isn't. Um, it's sort of just become like an art project that we get to work on with friends, as Ben mentioned. And uh, we always wanted to, the, we, we settled on the pot dealer concept because we wanted to tell a story in real time online. And we know from experience that that interaction between a pot dealer and a client is very short because the pot dealer's got places to be. And uh, it's very rarely like Pineapple Express where they're like, yeah, let's hang out. Uh, so Sometimes it is. Sometimes and, and it in is. In the show it is sometimes. But uh, we were really, co we were very conscious that we wanted to create a web series that you could enter the story on any episode so that there wasn't a story that you had to follow from beginning to end, that every story is self-contained so that if you decided you wanted to watch more, you could choose whatever one in you wanted to watch next. It's easier to share. It's easier to lower the barrier to entry into an, being an audience member. And the, the high maintenance universe is populated by so many fascinating characters. I'm curious what your process is for um, developing those very unique personalities that you see in each episode. Probably the same as it is for all of our uh, cohorts sitting here. It's, you know, st stories from our lives, stories from our friends' lives who they, then who have given us permission to use uh, their stories. There's definitely sometimes, it's, it's, and I'm sure for you guys too, it's gotten to the point sometimes where people, you know, friends will tell us stories, and the, but they'll preface it with, you can't use this. And then they'll tell a story. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of that. Um, and every, you know, everyone's sort of a composite of us plus others, plus some imagination here and there. It's, it's we, a little of everything. We definitely like to take like a, a person that you recognize and use that as the f uh, a, a stepping stone to get to something that you don't recognize as much. Yeah, we like the surprise. We like to sort of mislead people, sort of, or, or lead you down one track thinking you know a character uh, and then, you know, surprise you with something that you were fully not expecting. Great. And uh, the last project we'll look at today is I Hate Being Single by Rob Michael Hugel. So let's take a look. How do you describe I Hate Being Single in your own words? Oh, um, it's a sitcom about a, a lonely hipster who lives in Williamsburg. And what inspired you to create the series? Well, uh, I'm an actor, and I've been doing comedic acting uh, for a few years, and I had been working in web series and getting experience in that. And um, I always had this idea about like just that particular pocket in time. Uh, I had one in particular where you know you're lonely, and it was about uh, it was like when I had first moved to New York, so it was very specific for me. Um, of being like living in Williamsburg where I live and uh, kind of just wandering around. It was like when you, when I really first moved here, felt very untethered and uh, I didn't have a solid group of friends or anything cause like everything in the city's new. So I was just, um, at the time I wrote it, I was in a relationship. So I was just looking back on the time when I was like in the most awkward place I, w I could be. And, uh, trying to use that as like a bounce board for where funny situations could happen. And a lot of the situations in the show are real life. They happen now, but then I put them on the character who's in this really kind of like mopey place just to make it a little worse for him, for fun. 
And so you talk a little bit about the kind of autobiographical influences and you're playing a character named Rob. How much are you playing yourself and how much has the character kind of evolved in a separate direction over time? 20% and 80%. No, I don't know. Uh, it's like, it's, it's kind of, it's just a weird mix. Um, it's like opinions I, or ideas I have where I'm like, in my head I'll never say them and then I'll write them and be like, well, I'll make this character f bring this up and then they can like work it out. Um, you know, Rob in this thing is wearing athletic sneakers. He says, I can't wear cool shoes anymore. They hurt my back. I have athletic sneakers, but I'm still wearing cool shoes today. So, you know, switch it up. Thank you, thank you. Gotta respect the cool shoes. And I mean, by extension, you sort of all are um, acting in your work at the same time as you're creating it. How much do you, Alexandra and Natalia, kind of find inspiration from your own experiences? How much are you playing variants of yourselves versus characters that you created separately? Well, for me personally, act, this was my first real experience acting, which was I was convinced by Alexandra that if we wanted I to I was like, <laughs> nobody is going to do this stuff except us. So, especially for free, it's like, you can't expect it. So I was like, you have to get in front of the camera. Um, right. So I, I had to just sort of be myself, I guess, to just, you know, because I was doing this for the first time. And um, of course, but her character makes out with like three girls in the first three episodes. And I get one guy with really funky teeth. So like, wow, you have a good life, Natalia. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not so much the story part, but uh, it's based on a true story. <laughs> and then, Ben, I feel like you're playing the most sort of character of anyone else do you find any kind of yeah. roots in your own life or is it just fully a character yeah i think he's probably his behavior is an idealized version of the way i would like to act uh but i don't you know he's he uh, does sometimes i think yeah he does sell yourself he's, short he's, <laughs> he's uh well we what we wanted to that that character to be was a non-judgment uh, an extremely non-judgmental person uh, and that because we needed him to be open enough to get into a situation if he needed to get into one. Uh, so we, I guess we refer to him as him. Like, we don't say you, we say him. So, yeah, he's different. But uh, Katya, who is uh, an amazing teacher of acting as well as a casting person of actors, has uh, kind of helped me unlearn all of the crap I learned in college. And uh, really, what you said just be yourself is kind of the most you could ask, I think, from a person going as a, on s in front of the camera. It's just be relaxed and be yourself. And the fact that we're working so hard on the shoot, we don't have, I don't have time to think about like, well, what's this gonna be like? I hope it's funny or I hope I'm good. You know, we set up the shot and then it's time to do it and then it's over. So, yeah. And then for everyone, how much is that, um, you know, acting in your pieces, writing them, directing them, how much is that a function of uh, necessity and, and sort of getting it, your whole vision out there um, yourself? Or is it by design that you wanted to take on all of those roles? I think for us, when it started, it was by necessity. Um, we didn't really know what we were getting into. But now I'm so glad uh, that we got to be these characters because it was so fun. Um, we got to shoot in L.A. with some amazing actors and comedians and play opposite people that were really, really funny. I think Natalia and neither one of us thought we were funny at all or could handle anything comedic when we got into this project. And I'm like, whoa, I, people are laughing? What? So it, somehow along the trajectory of the last year and working with amazing actors, we got to, to become better actors ourselves as well. I think also for us, we're used to working in projects where we have sort of, you know, do wear many hats. And even in some of this, I was shooting while she was acting and I was directing and someone, you know, we'd kind of like do it all. So we're, we're comfortable in that position. Uh, I've worked with a few directors over the course of the series because we had a whole season. And then the new season, I'm directing mostly myself. Um, it started off with having other people direct because I didn't. I didn't feel confident in that. I thought, I'm worrying about writing and producing it and being in it already. That's a ton. Uh, but after you know, doing a season and it, it came out great, I'm, I, I was thinking, well, you know, half the time when someone else is directing and you like wrote it and you're, you're acting and you're gonna edit it, uh, you're kind of like, well, let me just tell you what it's gonna, it's like sometimes you just take away the control anyway. So 
Um, this time around, I wanted to direct, and uh, but I'm actually now getting up, you know, excited for another project or another thing where I can bring in another director and and work with them again with a different experience. It was kind of the same for us too. Uh, we we also started when we started. We thought we should bring in outside directors, and then after a couple of those, we were like, wait a second, we we can do this. We know how to do this. Ben also edits the show. Um, and it just it was just sort of efficient to <laughs> wear all the hats and, and do it that way, I think. And I'm curious, as uh, online creators and all of these great series live uh, in the online space now, is that something you all feel committed to pursuing? Or do you see your next projects um, continuing to live online? Are you looking to kind of branch out in other directions? I'd love to hear kind of not only the status of each of these at the moment, but where you see your work developing next. I mean, we would love to take our show to television, you know? I think that would be a dream for us. And I'd also because it's not, I mean, we love being on the web because it's accessible to everyone. Um, and it's, you know, it's free and it's out there and we have full creative control, but we definitely, you know, want to make this a more sustainable thing in terms of being able to live off of our work. And Yeah, we'd really like to keep uh, our show somehow online and get paid to do it and pay people. We, we're really kind of in love with being in the digital space uh, just for the same reasons everyone else is because you can kind of do whatever you want and have creative control and we don't know anybody who watches television sort of when it's program I mean we, we our know. parents I mean, maybe some people some <laughs> people are doing it some I think they're trying to sound cool when they say I don't watch TV anymore. Oh, I, I don't know I, <laughs> I, definitely I, trying I don't, to we sound don't know cool. many people who have even like tel they'll, they'll have a television but they use it to stream you know their Apple TV or their Roku or whatever they're doing and um, so we're and as do we so we're really we're really into it we we're just trying to find a way to make it work I mean the draw of television is the money I there's nothing like it, you know, right now. Yeah. Um, there's nothing like that kind of money happening for just a, a web series. So that's, you know, that would be the draw. But the but the other, the things that being online offers are just so attractive to us. Yeah. Sustainable is the key word. It's like if it's sustainable on TV or if it's sustainable on the web, it, at the point when we can stop asking for favors would be really primo. But, um, you know, We'll make it work until then. I'm I'm dedicated to. I feel like we're out of favors personally. Oh, well, <laughs> us do. Out, yeah. But you know, I don't know. It, there's always I don't know. It's ridiculous. But I'm I'm excited to keep making stuff and uh, interacting with the audience online is what the best part to me is that uh, you know I know when you have a big TV show, I guess eventually you get a following on Twitter really quick or something, but. Um, People who are following you from the web are like, so they're like diehard uh, from the beginning. And it's something really, I think, special. So building on that is something I want to do, which is like keep the audience coming and, and telling their friends and building it. So I'd love to open it up for questions. I have one more for the panel, and that's just uh, given that you've all kind of successfully accomplished uh, an online web series, do you have any advice or words for wis words of wisdom for those who uh, maybe aspire to do the same? Anything you've learned? I'll start. Be specific. I think uh, everyone drew from their specific points of view, and that's been the, the most compliments I ever get about anything I make is when they're pointing out something that I really just thought in a little tiny crevice in my head was like kind of funny to me. And I was like, I don't know. You know, when I used to like bring out ideas for the show in the, f the first episode or whatever, I'd be like, oh, maybe you like this. Uh, like no confident. I was just, you know, it's scary to bring your personal ideas out. But as it turned out, you know, once once you start showing people and it's all put together, they go, oh, I, I think that all the time. And you're like, wow, I didn't expect you to relate. That's amazing. That's what I want. I would say if you can help it, don't worry about numbers and don't worry about how many people are watching it. Your primary goal should be, is it good? And would you watch it? And would you stay up all night working on it? Because if you're going to stay up all night working on it, somebody is going to stay up all night watching it. So you just have to follow your guts. And uh, 
I at at a certain point people confuse uh, uh, persistence or or exposure with good, you know. And I don't actually think that's true. I think that uh, I mean I think it leads persistence leads to things being good sometimes, but uh, just because something has a million views doesn't mean it's good art. Yeah, and also um, besides just being truthful to what you know, like everyone is saying. Um, I think it's useful to wait until you're ready to put something out. I think the immediacy of being able to just shoot something and throw it up online and then be like, hey, look at this, look at this, what do you think? Uh, I think that is very enticing to a lot of people who are impatient to get their careers going and impatient to, you know, to, to be heard. And uh, I, I don't know, we, I, I think sometimes I see things where I'm like, well, this is almost there but like it seems like they didn't take that much time with it or I, I don't know I just think I think waiting until you're when waiting until something is done and, and fully done and and that might mean sitting on it for a little bit longer than you'd like to <laughs> when you know maybe you did work on you shot it for months and months and you know it feels like it's been forever and you just want people to see it but I do think there's something to be said for you know a few reviews of something and, and maybe you need to do a pickup shot because something doesn't make sense and you just, you need to do that, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I would say my advice is waiting until something is complete and, and ready to release it. And just adding to that, I think it's also for us, it was really important to do work that had good quality, you know, and that the production value was good. And even if it was just going on the web and anyone can make a web, you know, put a video up on the web, that we wanted to do something that felt like maybe it could be on television or you know it had like better um, standards and nowadays where a lot of so many people own like a Canon 5D it's not that hard to do it and even with no money you know any questions from the audience hi um, I'm a fan so my question is concerning so this move to television or this move to a platform that helps monetize your projects. Is there space for people who do create web series just to coalesce into their own platform that will help monetize that? Or is there red flags with that? I can say there's not yet. No. There is not yet something that is reliable and tested that is going to be able to support the production and distribution of web series. Uh, uh, not to my knowledge. Anyway, it's just about providing, peop uh, providing people a decent wage and very few web outlets compared to TV, which is, I mean, let's be honest, it's a little gauche to give a person that much money for like making a story, I think. But uh, I just think that there's not, the web doesn't actually ha uh, have an outlet yet. And I think everyone feels like it's right around the corner and everyone's like, oh yeah, TV's on the way out, it's a dinosaur. But I don't think that there is a proper, uh, you know, Netflix, you know, makes, they don't make web series yet. They make tried and true TV people who come to the web. Uh, so people are working on it. We'll see. I got a question for you two right here. <laughs> I see that your film or, you know, television has a spiritual side to it. Did that come from a real place? And if so, what was that moment that made you guys say, this is how we want to portray the show with a more spiritual side and things like that? Well, um, Natalia and I bonded originally because we both are spiritual seekers. We've both done all kinds of different things in the past maybe 15 years from going to Buddhist meditation. I went to like witch camp in the woods of Oregon and slept under, under a tarp for two weeks. Um, I mean, we've done, we've done all kinds of different types of ceremonies, rituals, whatever. So we have a deep desire to get to, kn to, get to know a spiritual depth. Um, but then we also are super in this world. Like we want to still be able to like go hang out with our friends and you know, that might mean doing drugs or drinking, but it doesn't have to be one thing mutually exclusive of the other, but it's always hard to create a balance. So we started seeing that our friends were also like starting to think about these things and it was becoming a little bit more something that you talk about at a party, oh, you meditate, whatever. And it was like 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. So we felt like it was something that people are talking about. We wanted to bring up um, in our show that you don't have to go, you know, meditate on a mountaintop and, and be far away, that you can also have a spiritual practice 
and still, you know, dress normal or whatever, you know? And, and show the humor in it because a lot of those situations are just naturally very funny. And, and we've done most of them, so we, we feel like it's okay that we're laughing at ourselves and we're not poking fun at it ever. I mean, we did a ceremony and there was like a guy, you know, who was doing all kinds of weird facial expressions and moving his legs all over and I thought he was going to kick me in the head. And if you watch our ceremony scene, like there's people that are doing some of these, um, you know, kind of outlandish things and that actually comes from truth. So a lot of our show is reflected. It's experiences that we've had or our friends have had that, that we think are partially ridiculous, but there's also a truth to them. Hi. Um, Rob, you talked earlier about social media and interacting with the fans. I just was curious for any of you how important it was to hear back from the fans and if that influenced the second season or any of your work. And uh, what about that did you have to kind of block out to keep your own integrity and your own um, perspective. Yeah, I'd say uh, I listen a lot. I mean, I listen to everything. Um, I'm at the point where I can see, I see every single, you know, mention or whatever, and uh, or comment, and I reply to almost every comment. But um, it's almost always positive. So it's kind of always just like I, I find that it's mostly like just encouraging as a whole, which is just like when people say love this, want season two, enough times you're like, all right, we're, this is what we're doing. We're going to make season two. If there was zero of those, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably still make season two. But, um, but there's been very few specific requests that I've been like, oh, that's ridiculous. But, you know, just uh, seeing how someone likes a character or um, how they, you know, quote a certain piece of it, it's, it's encouraging and it's... Uh, it's just helpful in the process to, you know, the best part is that we all work so hard on doing this to see those things. It really makes it worthwhile for sure. You know, like we're not making money. We are <laughs> making, you know, comments, hopefully, and tweets. <laughs> if I'm starting a web series, you know, from the ground up, I don't yet have a fan base. Um, what, what are the first steps I should take to try and build a substantial fan base? You should make a good web series. I mean, there aren't, I mean, there's a lot of web series out there and most of them are not very good. I have to be candid and say that it's just, it's just the way it is. I don't know what's going on. It's early in the game. If, if you make something good, there is, the cream will, can rise to the top. Uh, as far as outlets are concerned, Katya and I are not very good to ask because we do almost no PR. We, we don't, I mean, that's just not something we do. Uh, but uh, like we were saying, take your time and just make sure that it's good. Make sure that you like it a lot and make sure that at least three other people want to see another one, you know? Yeah, I just spend all my time wor working on the show and that adds, adds up to time spent. Uh, I don't know. It adds up to something coming back. More time... I don't know, online, out in the world, meeting people, talking about what you do. That's, that's the best I could say. I mean, the great thing about the internet is people, it's so easy for people to share things, you know, so if you just start with your community and they're excited about it, then they're gonna share it to their people and, you know, it sort of grows, but that takes some time too. Hi, um, I'm a big fan of High Maintenance. I think it's really fantastic web series. I just wanted to ask a kind of technical question, I guess. When you were starting out with this, um, you obviously have these amazing actors to work with. But in terms of um, a crew, you know, what, do you, what did you start with and did it grow? And you know, what, what do you think is sort of like the minimum you could create something with? Well, we were lucky that um, we had a lot of friends who were in the filmmaking, independent filmmaking community already. And, and one of them was a or is a grad student at uh, NYU in the filmmaking program there. And just just by tapping her to help us with our pilot um, and direct our pilot, actually, she brought with her an, an excellent um, DP. I should say names. Her name, her name is Sarah Violet Bliss, and she actually just won a grand jury 
wait, with the grand jury she won, at uh, South by South by. Yeah. yeah. So she's, she's pretty great in her own right. Um, but she, yeah, you know, she brought with her a talented DP, this woman, Laura Teruso, like, and she brought a sound person with her and she brought, you know, some connections. And then when another time when we couldn't, um, then we decided to start directing and, um, but we continued to sort of use this DP and then like once she couldn't do it and then she, you know, another person in that program was recommended to us, Brian Lannon, and he's fantastic. And then we just, you know, got a rhythm with him and kept working with him. And, um, and then over time, as we've had these episodes sort of living out there on the internet, we've been so fortunate to have people approach us like, just saying, hi, I want to work with you. How do I do that? I'll, I'll do it for free. Um, kind of all, all around um, in, at every level of the crew. So I feel like uh, f grad programs, like film grad students who are, who are doing um, film or people who, who have just graduated, people who are trying to build their reels, I think those are, that's a great sort of place to start and then they sort of bring other people with them and then, you know, you just meet people along the way that, you know, if, if your project resonates with them, they're going to want to be part of it, yeah, hopefully. And I think that as you can, you can get really small on, you know, in some things, like where and when we're shooting on a train, like I'm running sound out of a H4N Rode Zoom field recorder, and like my uh, my microphone, my headphone uh, that is plugged into my ear to be like my my that's like I'm list I'm monitoring sound as we're doing it, and then uh, you know we'll just go around in the subways with a, a camera person and me and whatever actor we're working with. And in the first episode, I just like I just shot a lot of things on my own, like all of the inserts and the smoking or whatever. It's just like any t it. There's really not a lot of excuses to not, <laughs> you know, just point a camera at something and make it work. I just think that sound is probably the most important thing in terms of boosting your quality. If you can't if you can't hear it, it it makes it like even it, you could be shooting on a red. If the sound is lousy, it's like what's the point? Okay, this, oh my God. This question is for um, any, anybody it applies to. Um, I'm a communication arts major right now, and I just wanted to know, um, and I'm kind of into a lot of things, like I'm into asking questions, but then I'm also into the editing side, and then I'm, I also have a lot of concepts in my head that I would love to get out, but then like, so what would you say is um, a route or like um, maybe classes or groups, or like what do you think I should get into that so I can like really narrow down what part of, uh, communications I want to focus on are like just to like get out there I don't know where I'm going. Okay. I would say just keep if you're in college just keep trying different things and then eventually one thing is going to stand out a bit more you know when I was in school I went to school for acting then I did photography then I decided to TA some film classes and people might be like wow you're all over the place are you confused I did I wrote two plays I directed them but I was just trying to find who I was as an artist and what I was passionate about. So the only way you're going to find out what you're passionate about is just by trying things. So don't try to just arbitrarily decide, oh, I want to edit or, oh, I want to act because, you know, you don't know until you really try multiple things. And you're in a great place. You're, it's a wonderful, beautiful spot as an artist to be like, oh, I'm going to explore. I'm just going to test the waters, have some fun, not put pressure on myself to decide right now. Yeah, I'd say hang around people who are making stuff and you'll learn everything from them too. And the more people who are creative that you can bounce off of and even just as friends, but you know, jump in, offer your help wherever and soon enough you'll probably have ideas and be like, oh yeah, like I think this is something I want to do too. And then you can pick that up, you'll have the experience. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you, Thank you all for being here today.